My customer was copying three terabytes of pictures out of his hard drive, and while it was reading, his cat rolled up and knocked it off the table. The hard drive instantly stopped working, and he just lost years of his life. His cat's last life is now in danger, so let's see if we can be their hard drive cat savior. Another company attempted to recover the data, but they had no luck. I'm always scared to pop the hood on these hard drives because you never know what you're gonna find. I read the report from the previous company, and they said that the reed heads were stuck on the platters at one point, so we have some info. See this little metal thing? This is a head comb that keeps the heads in place when we remove them. Let's take apart the drive, and this is what the head stack looks like. This is what reads and writes the files from the platters. Now let's take a look at the heads under a microscope, and we can see that the heads are mangled, and this one head is missing. Using my last brain cell, I would assume that the head is stuck to the platter surface. So this is our plan. Let's remove the platter platters from the hard drive, find that missing head, and then analyze all the platters for any scratches. See this tool? This tool allows us to use suction to remove the platters. We'll need to remove all five platters one by one. Then we can check all ten platter surfaces for any damage. And look at this. See this little black square on the platter? This is the missing reading head. And if we put a new pair of heads in the drive and spun it up, the new head would have hit that thing on the platter and caused a miniature explosion. So let's carefully pop it off the platter and we need to be extremely careful not to touch the surface. Now we have to lock in. We have to carefully clean and analyze all of these platters and if we forget which way the platters go back in, it's game over, we're cooked. Okay, the platters look surprisingly good with no deep scratches at a level 6 and no deep grooves at a level 7. Now we need a fresh pair of replacement heads, so let's quickly grab one from a healthy donor drive. Then we can install it into my custom drive and boom the hardware part of this job is done easy enough let's keep going let's plug in some SATA cables along with the terminal adapter to talk to the drive this terminal adapter allows us to talk to the drive in ways we usually can't let's tell the drive to unlock the ROM so we can access the service area after doing this we have full control of its brain then let's tech unlock the drive and we can see that we have a proper ID and we have full access to the firmware which is amazing the first thing we need to do is back up all of the important service area files. Most of these files are unique to the drive, so if they become corrupt, we can lose all of the data and all of our hard work is gone. There's two copies of the service area on this drive, and we can see that one of the media cache files is damaged. But when we go to sector edit, we can see that we actually have full access to the data. And when we do a head test, we can see that all the heads are functioning perfectly. Let's go ahead and edit some firmware to stabilize the drive before we start reading any data. And while I was doing this, the second copy of the media cache file became corrupt, bricking the drive. So now we can see that the drive is stuck in a busy state. This is why we always back up the service area first, because things can just catastrophically fail. So we had to lock in and upload the translator and the media cache files to the RAM. Now if we open data extractor, we can see all of the files. And we can see that the data adds up to 3.5 terabytes. Let's image the hard drive and his data is saved. If you need something recovered, the link's in the bio. Peace.